This is Profiler Milagros Kendall, agent number 2543, reporting in for case number 971. First sighting of the subject in question was at the Ark, oh, was in 9th century Ireland. And uh, the Ark of the Covenant has something to do with this case. Based on initial reports of the subject, we pulled up an archival report log from the last time an entity like this was sighted, which was in the medieval era. Using Dorm's special technology to communicate with agents in the past, I'll be reviewing Agent Finley Hemsworth's reports along with my current day agents as a part of this case. Well, so it's known actually mostly as the Kibutios dis diathekikis. That's actually the technical name of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, I spent a lot of time in school. Well, that was like Christian school my parents made me go to for some reason, even though I knew that the spirits of this world were a little different than what they were dealing with in the Bible. But I really focused on that. And uh, I happen to you know, feel like there was some energy in Ireland of all places. I'm not sure if it was something to do with Stonehenge or like things that are over there and the British Isles, but I also wanted to see something about a man, but that's a whole entirely different kind of conversation. I'm sorry I brought that to work. So the thing about the covenant is, is that it's one of those things that is always kind of searching for a home, like the right place it should be. It was actually, I think, originally in Ethiopia back in the real days when it was created and then moved around. No one's really 100% sure because the lineage has been so garbled and jumbled throughout time. So I think that the energy of it potentially might be connected to something else out there, if you know what I mean, that gets lost along the way through the time and space continuum. That's my thoughts on that, at least. You know, it, it's hard sometimes when you're looking for your place in the world. I feel like I relate to that so much. I feel like I know what's going to happen, so I feel like I know I should be a certain place, but even when I'm there, I can't always see what's, you know, coming forth, even though I should be able to see everything that's coming forth since I'm a psychic. But sometimes things get cloudy. I feel like some items don't want to be seen and some spirits don't want to be heard. I can relate to that as well, Johnson. Um, I have a question about this Ark of the Covenant, the... Kabutis dis diathakius. Diathakius, okay, diathakius. I might have to check the spelling uh, on that, but... That's the Greek, I believe, version of that. My Hebrew's not as good as it used to be. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a question about it. So we've, you know, uh, historically we've heard these myths and legends about the Ark of the Covenant, but never before did we, I mean, besides Hemsworth's account, know it to be its own living, breathing entity. So this is really interesting. Do you think this is the actual Ark of the Covenant that is some type of living being, or is it something that mimics it? Right now, I'm getting a sense and energy that it might be something that is using it as a vessel of some sort is my real hit on it. But I'm not sure that could be why it's been such a 
elusive object in our entire history of the written word. People have been trying to track down this thing mm -hmm. and have had issues with it. And like I said, I think sometimes it wants to hide itself. So I think that it could be an entity that is using this as a vessel for transport around the world. Okay, thank you, Johnson. I will go over to Agent Walker next. It's been a long time since I've been on vacation. It was really nice to be in Ireland. Can I just tell you, the pubs, do you know that they serve beer at room temperature? And then when they can tell that you're from America, they don't really like you a lot. But I have a lot of Irish ancestry, so I just didn't talk and everyone thought I was a lass or something. Anyway, we all know the Ark of the Covenant, right? We've all seen Indiana Jones. I've seen Indiana Jones. I don't want my face melted off. I'm not trying to go looking for that thing. So it's interesting to me that an entity of all things would want to be in the Ark of the Covenant. Hmm. Is it capable of also face melting? Does it want the person that can find it? Do they want their face to be melted? These are all good questions. I'm asking questions and I, I don't have the answers, but that's, I just, I, I'm still a little <laughs> drunk, but uh, no, I, phew. I do have, I have this gene, uh, this Irish gene. Um, I'm not a natural blonde, but I just don't, people, people don't take you seriously when you walk around as a redhead. But uh, some, some of us redheads, we have this gene where we metabolize alcohol very quickly so I can just do a couple shots. And by the time I'm here doing this uh, recording with you, I'll be sober as I'll get out. It sucks when you go to the dentist, let me just tell you. Because, you know, they have to keep on giving you no. It's a whole thing. But anyway, I guess I took one shot too many. <sighs> Irish carb moms. Is that in poor taste? I'm not really sure. So, anyway, Savannah was right a full on full bore energy thing. And you know, I'm really glad we had Hemsworth account. The Hemsworth account is probably what saved our lives that day. The Hemsworth account is, man, I've never said this before. Something I'm grateful for. I don't believe in God. <laughs> I thought that that's, that's clear. God wouldn't, uh, have let monsters ruin the earth, right? Anyway, I wasn't drunk on that day. Let's just say that on the day, on the cliffs of Dover. Santana, what are your thoughts on this Ark of the Covenant? Oh, I have a lot of thoughts about it. Um, so first of all, let me say, I was in Ireland with Agent Walker. Um, we were there just like to, well, I, you know, I have, you know, I write down everything and you know, I love to do my research. Yes. So we were there kind of like on a working vacation. You say. Walker has this thing where she thinks that she cannot get drunk because she was like Irish, like five generations ago or something. I, for my part, I think she was wasted, but you know, I don't drink beer. So I'm just sitting there and you know, there's all this singing and you know, I, for, I was happy to see her break out of her shell, but it was kind of hard to have her focus because by the time we actually got to what we needed to do, I was kind of working on my own. But anyway, so we had already gone to the archives and looked over the Hemsworth document about the Ark of the Covenant. And what he said is very specific. He said, this is something that's animated by a, a, a monster, a monster that is so old that it existed before the Bible was written. And I think if we were to name that, I almost don't like to say it. Um, I think that it's, it's, it's some sort of succubus. Hmm. And I want to say it might be actually named in the Old Testament. Um, it might be Lilith. But it's also confusing because 
you know, succubus are supposed to draw people in, but this can be so elusive. And so we're trying to understand kind of like the nature of how it can be like, you know, oh, come over here, come to him, come to me, papi. And then it can be like, no, stay away over there. I don't want you to, I don't want you to find me. I don't want you to see me. It's kind of confusing. Hmm. Interesting. I'm, uh, I just want to ask a couple of questions. So, um, it's, uh, I, I've heard from other reports that it, it could also be, it's an energy being, possibly a succubus, possibly now you're saying maybe even Lilith from the Bible. Um, do you, is it corporeal at all, or is it just a, an energy, a, a succubus energy being? Cause I know that, uh, that subclass of succubus exists, the ones that are just energy beings. Well, the ark is is solid. It's something that, that people can see when it wants to be seen. You know, so maybe it's buried under a sand dune, or maybe it's you know maybe some leprechauns found it because they thought it was treasure. So in Ireland, they you know they put it in a pot of gold and they covered the rainbow. Um, that could be something that happens too. As for Lilith, I don't. I don't even want to. She could take a lot of forms. Let me say, she could be, she couldn't look like a real woman, or she could be like, she could be like smoke that kind of, you know, comes out of like a hookah. Hmm. Okay. Agent Callahan, let's begin your report. Yeah. So I, uh, I had these great realizations because I felt left out. Uh, and it turned out to be really helpful to the case. Uh, I felt left out of the trip uh, because I was invited later and then I got stuck in Canada. So I was doing a lot of looking at archival footage and, and doing my own research there. And then I, it occurred to me that uh, nobody likes to feel left out. They don't like to feel left out of trips. They don't like to be left out when an ark is being built. And they're saying elephants, giraffes, uh, horses, but but not you being, not you, right? You you don't have access to the ark. So um, I feel like, you know, legend or, or history, however you want to think about it, uh, yeah, yeah. Do I think it's Lilith? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because you know what? That, that girl got left out of a lot of things, too. I mean, could she have been queen of hell? Yeah, hell yeah. You know, uh, we had to let Lucifer be, be, be king of hell. I mean, that's some serious, that, that's, that's got to feel rough, right? It's got to feel rough. And, and, you know, Lucifer's probably having a great time having some Guinness, flipping some tables, saying chairs, you know, just saying, saying chairs to each other, right? But no, uh, so so yeah, I think it's pretty clear that uh, yeah, that I'm. Uh, it's pretty clear what this is, what this is, and what this was to me. Hmm. So you're saying you think it was Lilith, uh, without a doubt. Hmm. Yeah, and, and and that's I, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say, uh, Hemsworth uh, Hemsworth was with me in the Toronto airport when nobody else was because. I, I was, I was listening to all of his footage and uh, I think it's pretty clear that he thought it was Lilith too, you know, uh, and that confirms it for me because he had a closer account. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Hemsworth, thank you for joining me here. Uh, yeah, it's so nice to be with you. Uh, I'm, I'm sending you this message to the beyond, to the future, through, you know, through the magic of this sort of golden projected light, golden white light. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, it's some sort of, it's a box uh, that supposedly left by the Egyptians. Maybe it was left by aliens before them anyway, but I'm, I'm, t I'm telling my story into this box and um, whoever's out there listening, I hope you can understand whatever language I'm speaking. Um, we understand you perfectly. Oh, great. Oh, I can, he I can hear you. I can hear you. This is a, in some ways, this is a miracle of the Lord, maybe of Jesus Christos above or something older than that. We don't know. Anyway, I'm glad I'm, I'm talking. What, what time period are, are, are you in? I'm not allowed to say. 
<laughs> you don't want to influence your timeline. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Okay, well, I mean, I'm 40 years old and, you know, that's kind of the maximum life expectancy. I'm like, I'm a basically, a, I'm a, I'm a great grandparent already. So um, I'll put him safe, so I'll be dead soon. Uh, so, you know, you won't have to worry about me spoiling any time or anything like that. Well, in that case, we're in 2021. I don't even, I can't believe I ask, because I don't even know what that, I don't even know what that means. I'm, I'm not educated, I haven't been to a school, so I don't, I don't know how to count that high. All I, I know, the time period that I'm in right now, uh, I don't know what in your time period you refer to it as, but we, we just call it um, medieval times. We call it that too. We actually, um, a lot of people in our time period have an affinity for your time period. We celebrate, we have festivals and pretend we live in your time period. Oh, no way. Yeah, there's, um, there's maples, there's um, turkey legs, pickles on a stick, all the things that you enjoyed. Maples? Like like the trees? Oh, uh, maypole. Uh, it's the pole that has like a ribbon with flowers around it and you dance around the pole. Did you do that? Oh, you know, our, well, the northerners do that. Oh, okay. It's called, it's a, it's a, a country, I don't know what, it, it's called Sweden, they do it, it's a thing. Oh, mm -hmm. And sometimes people, there's possessions and it looks, there's a lot of flowers and ribbons, but a lot of times people die, so. Uh, anyway, I wanna, I wanna document the case that I just worked on uh, yes. for you. So, um, the thing, so basically what we have is the Ark of the Covenant, right? It's been documented in, in uh, the Bible, which I'm assuming you, you, st you still have, because it's, you know, it's been around for a while. Um, but we're dealing with the, the Ark of the Covenant, but not specifically just the Ark. It is, I believe, uh, it's being animated by a monster that is so old that it predates the Bible. And I don't know if it's, maybe it's like a, a succubus. Well, the best way for me to describe it being, uh, not that I've read the Bible, but I've, uh, and I haven't been to school, as I said before, but I do know the stories that my parents told me of the Bible. And one of my favorite stories is uh, this Lilith person. And what I believe is that this succubus is actually the spirit of Lilith. And it's kind of, it's not so much a ghost or it's not fully, it's like you can see through Lilith a little bit. She's almost kind of physical, but also sort of, you know, sort of wavy, uh, slightly open. The opacity is just a little off. Um, and uh, she's very beautiful. So we've been actually been referring to her as Lilith Fair. Um, and Lilith Fair, she's, she's, so, she's beautiful, right? Sorry, I'm losing my artist. She's beautiful, uh, but and that's, that's her weapon. Is you look into the, this fair, beautiful face of hers. And um, but then she has these sort of like giant, these eyeballs that come out and it's almost like the eyeballs have hands and can rip you apart. Like she wants to devour your face. And that's how she holds on to her beauty. You little there and also protects the secrets of um, the Ark of the Covenant. And also she's, she's very warm. So sometimes she's been known to melt skin. And that's, that's what I, you know, we got her back in that box, that gold box, uh, and I found a rainbow, uh, and we we buried that box at the bottom of the rainbow uh, over here in Kilkenny. Thank you for that, Agent Hemsworth. There was, um, in our time, the agents actually, um, they were at the cliffs of Dover and they said something happened there. Were you, do you, um, is that place special for you as well in terms of the Ark of the Covenant? Um, yeah, because that's where I, um, that's where we discovered it. Um, I was on a, like a nudist retreat because below the, the cliffs of Dover is actually some beaches. 
And so I was doing like a nudist retreat thing. Uh, and we went into a cave because, you know, pale uh, Anglic Anglican people, we can't, we can't be out in the sun for that long. So we went into the cave, we stumbled, we found the Ark of the Covenant and we knew we had to keep it safe. And um, my next stop of, of port uh, was in Ireland. So we actually took it with us. Uh, we were meeting another retreat there. And um, that's when Lilith Fair, you know, came out of the box and was like, why, why'd you take me from the cliffs of Dover out of my cave? my resting spot. Okay, so the Cliffs of Dover is, was Lilith, was Lilith's resting spot, you said? Yeah, well, whoever had the Ark of the Covenant before we found it, that's where they put it, you mm -hmm. know, to, to, for safe. I don't know if they were coming back to get it. I don't know if it was Knights Templar, that's sort of, you know, before, mm -hmm. before medieval, that's sort of like classical period. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay, Agent Walker, I got a tip from one of our agents. I hate it when I get these tips because it means that you aren't being upright, upfront with me. I got a tip from another agent that said something that you have something you want to tell me. You weren't actually drunk that day? Uh, uh, Marisol, Milagros. No, 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 it wasn't, It uh, no. It wasn't me and it wasn't Marisol. Okay. It was Agent Arsenal Roy 2K. Is this listen, true? Listen, I, okay, listen. No one's asked me about this yet. So I'm willing to be forthcoming when the question's asked. I, I wasn't drunk on the day with the encounter on the cliffs of Dover. That is true. Okay. I was, however, the day before you know, uh, over my head, uh, uh, under the table, uh, uh, put, put out before I, I was shut out. So, I, I, you know, I, uh, found myself engaged with a very interesting person over the fact that I could drink as much as I'd prefer to drink. Uh, and, and, uh, they said they could drink more than me. And I knew that that wasn't true. So, little did I know, in this particular pub, there's a drinking contest, and if you drink the most and you outdrink the person that has challenged you in the drinking contest, you get, get a four-leaf clover. Mm -hmm. And I had to win that. And what happened... Did you win it, first of all? I'm not one for storytelling, but you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. Okay. All right, let's, let's take a step back then. Guinness, 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 pound for pound, drink for drink. I am representing Dorm very well. Until, little did I know, someone had been putting Johnny Walker into my Guinness. At a certain point when you're drinking, you can't taste the difference between uh, sweet ale and hard alcohol. I was being, I was being sabotaged. Mm. So no, I did not win. Okay. I could have, I would have, I should have, but I end up falling right to my knees, passing out face first into the sawdust floor. By the time I came to, everyone was standing around laughing at me. Anyway, I, 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 uh, I uh, dislocated a lot of shoulders. I punched a few people in the face. I uh, stole someone's shoes. I... Smashed all the glass in the pub, and I think, I think I stole someone's kid. Stole someone's kid? They got back to their parents in time. There shouldn't have been a kid in the pub. It was very confusing. So that's why the police were called in. And because you asked 
I told you, I, I don't appreciate this idea that I was withholding this part of this, the trip that really, frankly, frankly, has nothing to do with the reason we were there. But I will say, that kid had a hot tip. So I was glad that I did all of that to get to that point. I don't really like children, but uh, as I was holding them under my arm like they were a piece of luggage or, or a baguette, they said, she is there, she is there. And when I looked, she was there. So as I was being forced to return the child to the parents right before I was about to be arrested, I realized that there was the field of four-leaf clovers. Mm -hmm. That that's where they must get the four-leaf clovers that they bestow upon the drinking winners. And it was in that moment that I saw that being creature, sexy, sexy woman, enraged. 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 I, I did see there was another tip from Agent Pandar about the clovers enraging the creatures. Uh, can you describe to me what exactly happened? Yes, I, I mean, actually, I can't because I was I was super drunk. Um, oh, right. OK, but, but uh, Agent Marisol can uh, because lit we were having a good time. We were drinking. We were having a, I, we were I was probably better to be around than I normally am. And Marisol watched me get dragged away and paid the bar tap. Agent Santana. Uh, I heard that you witnessed some things that happened in the pub. That's, um, I'd like to know more about that, but really I'd like to know about the four leaf clovers. So I hear that Lilith was enraged by them. I can't, uh, I'm sorry, my, my video, did I, okay. I can't. Uh, Lilith was enraged by these four leaf clovers. She doesn't like things that have symmetry to them. Hmm. Or very uh, disoriented, very angry. Uh, she's, 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 a, she's a interesting creature. You know, she, according to, you know, Jewish mysticism and the Zohar, um, it says that she was the first wife of Adam, the first man, and that she left him because he was trying to control her. So I, I think that she also doesn't like these four leaf clovers because Hemsworth in his account says that he was making some sort of a rune out of them to try to contain her powers. Mm. I don't like men to control her. You know, when that happens, she she's going to try to kill you. And she's going to try to do it in a way that affects your manhood, if you know what I'm saying. Mm. I think I do. I'm not sure if that's, you know, politically correct. Um, but if you have... Uh, a penis, she's going to take it off. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. So, um, she also, you know, I feel like she also has this vendetta against certain women because, you know, Eve kind of replaced her in all of the, you know, mythology that came afterwards. Now, Eve, you know, did it really end up good for her? No, but sometimes, you know, you just want attention, I guess. And so I, I saw Lilith start to form and she kind of zeroed in once she became a actual, you know, female form, mm -hmm. a redhead that looked kind of like, you know, Agent Walker, if Agent Walker wasn't a blonde. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Santana. Johnson, with your abilities to pick up on what people are feeling or thinking. What were you picking up during this uh, this whole case? Well, I mostly was picking up man, but that's besides the point. Um, 
I was looking for a total Hamsworth, as they say. <laughs> um, I was like internet chatting, you know, I had my, you know, apps out, you know, because we're traveling and it's nice to be in different pools sometimes because when you're like a new feature, you know, in the in the place, people get real excited about you, you know, the new thing in town. And I've always done well overseas. So I was, you know, swiping through and there was this guy and he's like, hey, looking for like, you know, perfect, you know, um, lady, like very into like, you know, finding, you know, pressing my luck and had like a bunch of like four leaf clovers. It was really cute. Like, oh, like he wants to get lucky. So I was like, oh, well, I do too. So figured I'd, you know, swipe right. And we met up at this uh, pub. I had a bunch of sawdust on the floor and it's just like real kind of like, you know, rustic kind of feeling kind of place, which I thought was real cute. Um, I love something that's kind of rustic, like a barn or like, you know, makes you feel kind of kind of primal a little bit. Um, so anyways, I meet this Hamsworth at this bar and um, he's real cute, kind of like a little mix between like, okay, this is very random. There's that Alec actor, um, Alan Tudyk, you know, he's like kind of character actor, kind of look kind of like that, kind of got that cute little jawline, but he had a voice that was kind of like Robin Williams or somebody, you know, like real like animated, but like fun. Is that, anyway. Real cute. So I just felt like, you know, we had an instant connection and he was like very mesmerizing, but he also seemed like he wasn't just about me. He like kind of just wanted to like take me outside. And I was like, okay, well that's fast, but okay. So we go outside and he's like, you know, I need somebody to go with me to like go on this journey for this perfect, like four leaf clover or something. I thought, Okay, um, I guess that's what we're calling getting lucky now. I just thought he was like being like figurative with those like emojis and stuff in his Tinder, but he was actually looking for real life clover. So he was like, yeah, there's this field we gotta get to. I was like, oh, you take me to a field now. Should I be worried that you, it's fine. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. And so we get out to this field and he has me actually pick the clovers that he's looking at. He like doesn't want to touch them for some reason. He's mm -hmm. telling me that I got to do it. Um, so it got kind of weird because sometimes, you know, but I was like, hey, I'm already out here in this field. I'm like, I guess I'll do what he says. It's like not going to hurt anybody if I pick a couple of clovers or nothing. That was a mistake. All of a sudden, got this like very opaque, kind of fair looking like creature, um, looking like a beautiful lady coming towards me with all the rage like I was like is this your ex are you dating some like other kind of spirit like what is going on are you from are you from another time and place I should know better than this honestly you would think as a psychic I would know better but sometimes I get blinded by love and blinded by Hemsworth well I I'm gonna come back to you Johnson but Callahan Callahan, you had something you wanted to share too about. What oh, the, oh yeah. Uh, what was it about? Well, I mean, quite frankly, it was about helping Susanna, and uh, it was all thanks to the internet, and of course, me me pouting a little bit at the airport. Oh, do you mean Savannah? Savannah? You mean Johnson? Savannah. Savannah. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I uh, <laughs> after this, we're friends. Uh, Agent Johnson. Yes. Sorry. Um, so look, one of my best friends, Jay, I call him pistol because he's, uh, he's real fast on the uptake. So he's one he, of our best agents. Yeah, exactly. So, so he's messaging me saying it, you know, if, if you see anything online, there's this account named Hemsworth, but of course, you know, like online accounts, the, the E is a three, the O is a zero. It's obnoxious, right? Uh, so keep a lookout for it. And then all of a sudden I, uh, I'm on Instagram and uh, just, uh, you know, between on break. And so that's when I saw Agent Johnson accidentally had her Instagram live on. And if she hadn't, quite frankly, I don't think we could have solved this case. Hmm. But uh that's when I learned that uh, she was in real danger and that the being wasn't in Ireland, not, not, not as we knew it. It, 
it was taking over Agent Johnson. So that's when I went to the Hertz rent a car and went her way. Where and where was she? Where did you go to get to find her? Well, I'm well, this is this is what was weird is that uh, Agent Johnson was in Maine. Maine? She, she said she was at a pub and she was looking for her Hemsworth. Was she transported to Maine? Look, it was what showed up on Instagram and I went to her. I went there and was she there? Yeah, yes she was. But not the way I, uh, I expected. Okay. She, uh, she was in a trance. She was connected on a whole other level and uh, terrified me. It, uh, but still thinking about it sort of shakes me. And uh, Hemsworth, who I had really felt like connected to because we were at the airport for so many hours together, um, he, uh, he wasn't like he, he was either. He was, uh, he was a beast. He was a scary beast. Okay. Just doing a quick summary. It sounds like there was some transubstantiation happening with Lilith taking over Savannah Johnson and this Hemsworth person, whoever that is, but the shared name is very curious, but this Hemsworth person, were they taking the form of Adam, Lilith's husband, who was trying to control her with the four leaf clovers? I need to go back to Hemsworth. Hemsworth. And I, the, the, the box, the Egyptian box wasn't working. I'm here and I'm, I'm happy to chat. Hemsworth, uh, I told you, I wasn't supposed to tell you about the future because it could change your trajectory. Again, honestly, I'm going to be dead soon, so. But did you tell any of your ancestors about Dorm? Well, um, I, I mean, you mean ancestors like children? Like I have a lot of children, as I said, right. my grandfather already. Yes. Um, my and like my my son is named Christopher, and his son is also like everyone. Um, it sort of goes every other like uh, Christopher. That's sort of the the first name where we go with, um, and they're all very very tall, um, as am I. Um, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I am known for my handsomeness and beauty for this time period. And uh, it, I, I can see with my, my child, uh, the child, the, his child, and then the one after that, uh, that they keep getting more and more beautiful, mm. uh, if that makes sense. So yes. I can only imagine what my, my um, ancestors down the line are gonna look like. Okay, uh, you didn't answer my question. Yeah, what was your question? Did you tell any of your children or grandchildren about dorm? Oh yeah, yeah, no, because I wanted them all to know. Um, I'm I recruited them, uh, so I recruited my son. It's, it's, it's all the Christophers down the line um, are sort of involved already. They're, they're they're you know they're they're low level though. They're not they're not where I'm at you know, essentially at the height of their career slash over the hill slash could be dead soon. So Hemsworth, I, I don't mean to question your story, but I think there's something you're not telling me because one of our agents, Jay Pistol, said that your great, great, great grandchild received a passed down message from you to seek out dorm in 2021 and the only way they could know that specific year is from you directly so you did you give your ancestors a message to seek out dorm in 2021 to find the ark of the covenant well i i mean i as i told you i don't i don't even know what that term 2021 means because i can't really count that high whatever whatever that is uh but i did 
I did tell my son, uh, make sure you tell your son to seek out the group that we, uh, that we work for. Um, and you know, I don't, some of them, I, I, who knows in the future, maybe they will work for, I, I don't know, as you said, you can't tell me, so I don't, I don't know how it's gonna work. You know, I'm sort of in the like, the beginnings of the of dorm, but they're uh, so yeah. I did, I did. I I said, you know, pass, keep passing this on. It's like a family lineage uh, type secret thing. Write it in your will if you have to. So, I think something. I think one of your ancestors was corrupted by an entity named Adam that was trying to capture Lilith. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, as far as I know, there was like a, oh, Lilith was like a first or second wife situation, Adam. Uh, so if it could be, you know, there were some other objects in the box, uh, the, the covenant, Ark of the Covenant thing. Uh, and so, you know, there could have, you know, when we put her back in, you know, I'm sure another uh, sort of succubus, male energy succubus. You know, when I think of it, there was um, there was a dagger, and mm -hmm. that can symbolize phallus, male energy. Uh, there was a dagger in in the Ark of the Covenant, so it very well could have been um, that Adam energy and you know who knows if I have my ancestors gorgeous as they are uh, we're taking over the I don't know you know I'm just not I can't accurately predict the future it seems like we um is there a word for this in your time like may, are we in a time uh, a time loop how does that work uh, it's very advanced dorm technology that I I'm not at liberty to reveal to anyone, really. Am I affecting? Am I about? Am I is what? Am I affecting you, and then you're affecting me in this time period? Because that would be wild. There is potentiality for all possible futures. Potentiality. Potentiality. That's got a nice ring to it. You have a nice voice. Thank you. I am. There's. Do you know this song? We have it here. I am a promise and a possibility. I am a promise with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of uh, potentiality. And I am learning, learning to hear God's voice. And anyway, that's what made me think of that potentiality. Is that, that song is from your time? Yeah, we sing it all the time. And it's like, it's like number one over here right now. Number one on what? Just people singing to each other. This is the number one song that people sing out in, you know, uh, you know what do we what do you call them? Uh, the the man or the woman that's at the bar singing at the pub, uh, uh huh, like a bandolier tells tales, sing songs that type. Oh, of like uh, the bards, the bards. bards yeah, mm -hmm. all the bards are singing it these days, and then that gets us singing it. It's and it's a, it gets stuck in your head. That's a it's an earworm. That song. Well, you've completely distracted me from the topic at hand, but uh, I'm going to come back to you, Hemsworth, because I have some things to sort out with my modern day agents. Okay. Don't, don't tell me too much because I don't want it to affect me over here. Right. I will be more careful about that. We've already muddied the timeline. Okay. Dorm database. <sighs> Who can clarify the connection between Adam and Lilith and the line of Hemsworth's descendants. Listen, it's not often that I'm referred to as beautiful, but when I was told that I resembled this entity with red hair, that was a big compliment. It was a huge compliment. That's all I wanted to tell you. And so uh, these Hemsworths seem to be char uh, charming a lot of different agents. And all right, all right, all right. I slept with him. 
It, it's, is that what you wanted to hear? Yes. I needed you to say it. Savannah was out of her out of her mind, out of her mind. And uh, you know what? I don't even prefer males, but there's something about this. I think I think we were dealing with an incubus and a succubus. It was, it was a lot, it was a lot to say. Anyway, uh, you know what? Have you ever made love on the cliffs of Dover? It was fantastic. You do, um, I feel bad saying this. Uh, you do realize these the hemsworth uh that you met this was an ancestral line that they they had a they had an agenda they were just oh, oh i'm 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 fully aware that i i was not helpful in this uh particular case i think i was more of a victim than i was a agent and uh uh, I don't think it's worth tendering my reg resignation, maybe a, a stay a stay of, of, of service. Uh, you know, ever since not being in the military, I feel a little bit more free and, and bold. And I never, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Is that what you wanted to hear? Um, uh, in a way, in a way, yes. So, yes, we're dealing with, it's almost as if timelines merged have you ever heard of string theory yes i mean of course you have you're a genius <laughs> i am <laughs> thank you i mean someone's got to be at this at your position anyway someone made a goddamn spaghetti mess out of the string theory just by mentioning one stupid thing about the year that we've been catching trying to catch this lilith thing i can't even imagine how that would have happened how how would how would an ancestral line figure out that we were dealing with a succubus and Adam coming to reclaim his first wife in the year 2021 on the cliffs of Dover. Yeah. Again, I was the victim in this. I'm not victimized. I'm not, I'm not, I had, it was great sex, but I wasn't helpful. I'm just saying it's confusing. It's confusing. It's confusing that someone, that these Hemsworths uh, seem to know so much. I agree. Um, I mean, do we do we have any leads on who could have possibly divulged such sensitive information? I mean, the, the Hemsworth Chronicles are 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 fascinating, and 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 it. But it's almost like when I watched the accounts of the Hem Hemsworth, it's almost like I'm not remembering exactly how I watched it the first time. It's changing. You know what I mean? Like, that's how much the timelines are crossed here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, are, are you Milagros? Are you? Mm, yeah, yeah. Do you need any uh, more inf I can tell you about the orgasms. No, I, you know, I I will be right back. I'll, I'll just hold that thought. I'll be right back. Okay, the, the orgasm. I'll, I'll think about the orgasm. Um, this is Profiler Belagos Kendall, Agent 2543. I'm, I'm here to report myself for incorrect handling of a history, historical, archival agent interaction. I complicated this case by revealing information about the current date to Agent Hemsworth from 9th century Ireland, and he passed down that information through his family line, and now we have a situation where his great-great-great-grandson has been corrupted by Adam, who is trying to get a hold, take control of his wife, Lilith. So these energy beings, succubuses, are taking over the bodies of Hemsworth and my agents to complete their marital battle, and it's my fault. I fully accept Dorm's punishment and penalties, and I will await further actions, but I will finish this case in the meantime. Johnson. So I picked up that clover while I was out with that Hemsworth. 
And all of a sudden, it was like I went through, you know, an, a wormhole of time because, you know, that happens sometimes. And all of a sudden, I was in Maine? I don't know. Strange. But I'm really grateful that Agent Callahan was actually there and, and happened to find me. Uh, <clears throat> I, while transported, for some reason, I felt myself feeling lighter and like more fair somehow, which is just weird. I don't like that implication of that, mm -hmm. but it was happening. And all of a sudden I had a dagger of some sort in my hand. So mm -hmm. I, I wasn't quite sure what to do with that, but I was all of a sudden filled with a huge amount of ensuing and impending rage. Like I could just cut off a, you know, part of someone. I know I would never, but that's how I felt. It felt so real. Like it was me trying to push through and anyway, I was overcome and I found myself out in a field that was not like the exact feel, but it felt like the field. It's like, you know, when you dream, sometimes you feel like you're in a place that feels like a place that's familiar, but it's not really a place. Mm -hmm. Happens to me all the time, but you know, uh, so I was out in this field and I was met by this young kid who looked a lot like the one I'd just seen. I wasn't sure if it was, it made me question everything quite honestly, because I wasn't sure all of a sudden if that Hemsworth that I'd met at the bar was a projection of a Hemsworth or was an actual Hemsworth. You know, sometimes one of the Hemsworths kind of look really hot and the other one's not as hot, but you'll still take them anyway. Yeah, As they look like was. bizarro versions of each other. Yes, exactly. So he tried to meet up with me and he said some things that were not very nice. And I don't think he was talking to me because I don't think a gentleman would say words like that to a lady such as myself. But then when I looked down, I realized that I wasn't myself anymore. Why does this keep happening to me along the way in this job? People just keep trying to possess me and different spirits and things. It's kind of crazy. Occupational hazard of some sort, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So he was like coming up to me and he was saying things like, "I." he told me that he is the promise and he is the possibility. He's the promise with the capital P. And I just responded to him, I am the potentiality. I don't know how, where that came from, but it like came out of my body. And I really wanted to stab him or hurt him in a way that I just talked about it was very inappropriate. But all of a sudden, thank goodness, Agent Callahan was there and drove up and showing her lights on this situation and I froze in the lights like a deer in headlights. And I don't think the spirit knew how to react to light in quite that way. Sometimes I think this is a type of spirit that's used to sucking things in and taking the light and making things devoid of light. And when you flood it with light, I think you can take it all. Hmm, okay. Agent Callahan, what happened after you arrived? Part of this was, was circumstantial uh, uh, luck. Uh, I might say. Uh, well, luck I didn't believe in until a four-leaf clover scared off some demons. But I'll say this. Hertz was out of small vehicles, but it did have a large bus. Uh, every time I came to a stop sign, people got on. It got out of hand, but I didn't have time to tell people to get off. I just said, fine, we're all going to Maine. So I carry this large group of people to Maine, are all sitting two by two. And then uh, I realized that in some ways I was fulfilling a prophecy, right? That, uh, you know, I knew what it felt like to be left out of a trip. And then all of a sudden I come, I come up to two beings. Of course there's two, right? Of course there's Adam and Lilith, right? Because they wanted to be on the original boat. So, so what objects were in the covenant, right? I didn't know Jack. Can I say that about what was in the covenant until Hemsworth said, it's Adam's rod 
it's a bowl of some sort and it's a tablet with writing on it. Well, I come up, my light's bright. Knock Savannah back into reality. Oh, excuse me, Agent Johnson. Back into reality. And then there's this uh, very, very, uh, I mean, there's no other way to describe it, attractive man that uh, was also coming to. And I see the bowl of clovers sitting on the floor, on the, on the grass. I see uh, Agent Johnson holding the, holding the rod. And then all of a sudden, in, in Hemsworth's back pocket, I I see a, a tablet. Not a not like you would have seen back in the day, but you know, like one of the things that you can you can read off of now that they sell at major bookstores across the country. So, uh, that, well, that might be the key, but we got to get over to him. Okay, Santana, can you tell me what happened next? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, this, I can't get this right today, this technology, okay. So as it turned out, um, the child that, I'm, I'm assuming Agent Walker told you she kidnapped a child. Yes. Actually, it was not a child, it was a, it was a small man. And that is why the police were extra upset because that's just disrespectful. You know, you don't like getting up another adult. Like, who does that? So this small man actually was a plant that the demons had put in the blood to get her attention. Hmm. It was another manifestation of Adam who was trying to get the Ark of the Covenant back from Lily. Look, I don't know if this is something we're going to resolve right now. And I have wanted to talk to you, as I often do. I know this is a thing. But I think we might need to come up with another department that's just for religion. I'm saying. I'm just saying. Hear me out. This has been going on a very long time. And somebody would need to take the Ark of the Covenant and put it back in Mesopotamia, which is Iraq. That might not be the safest thing to do right now. And I, I just don't know. Is it even, like, a time-sensitive thing? I mean, like I said, this has been a battle that has been going on since almost the beginning of time. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just putting out there, we might need to have a separate division to look into, you know, things that are biblical. Um, but from my understanding of my research, combined with all the things that I saw, I don't think this is going to end. I think that we need to get the ark someplace where it belongs, so that's neutral ground, so that neither of these entities can continue to try to manipulate it to infest other people and, and possess them to continue waging this battle over and over and over again. That's, that's just, that's my opinion. Thank you, Santana. Walker, did you and the other agents end up moving the covenant somewhere? We did. We went, what's that town in, in Jerusalem, but in America? Jerusalem? Or Be Be is there Bethlehem? In America, yeah, that place. So it's in Pe Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, currently. Yeah, but I, but again, as soon as we did it, it's. I only know that because I, I tattooed it on my arm. It's some, some some like kind of forgot. Okay, um, just one last question for you. Um, uh, were the what was the final status of Lilith and Adam? Are they back in the covenant? You know, Lilith is an interesting symbol for people who need to break free from something that's keeping them dependent. And it really wasn't my calling to make sure that he got what he wanted or she got what she wanted. But let's just say there's a world where Adam's still looking and he's not gonna be able to find her because he's looking in the wrong place. Agent Hemsworth. Um, 
it's been um it's been an honor to speak with you well uh, the pleasure has been all mine i um i'm sending my love to wherever whenever you are uh and i'm just excited that you know whatever this thing is i'm talking into i'm gonna put it back in the the chest that i found it in and uh obviously tell my whole my lineage to keep passing it on so we can continue to send messages to the group group yes so maybe you, maybe we could call it like a group a group threat a thread or a group text something like that mm -hmm. you're truly ahead of your time uh, i just want to tell you to tell your family your ancestors to be careful and um, look for dorm in 2021. Look for dorm 2021. I'm gonna keep telling them to send that message. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, I mean, I don't know what experiences you, if, if, if this art comes back up again, but you know, we were able to temporarily uh, get it back to a, um, you know, a neutral, vibe if you will uh we got the succubus is back in um lilith fair is back in adam adam we call him adam sandler is back in um and you know just remember clovers are key um smash a bowl smash a dagger. The, the the interesting thing is that they these these um these spirits these energies whatever you want to call them they may seem bad and uh, aggressive but essentially they are keepers of the Ark of the Covenant and it's many, many secrets, which I'm sure I'll never know about as I'm nearing uh, my, my own demise. Well, I'm it's, been a pleasure. it's been a pleasure and I, I hope in the, in this, whatever 2021 is that you're at, I hope that uh, you have a long, 40 years of life as well. Thank you. <laughs> I hope so too. This is Profiler Milagros Candle Agent 2543 reporting on case number 971. Supplementary report to my earlier log. I did in fact send a message to the past, to the Hemsworths. It was me. I'm redacting some of the report so that the agents don't see the full Hemsworth file and can't piece everything together for their own protection and to preserve what can be preserved of this timeline. Reporting on the entities, Lilith and Adam, they um, inhabit the Ark of the Ve Covenant as a vessel. The Greek name is Kibuthius Diathakius. It is, they are energy succubuses. They have taken many forms. They predate the Bible and they appear in the Bible many times. They are very sentient. They are very sophisticated. And I would say they are a mix, maybe impulsive because they're, um, their fiery relationship, um, their fiery relationship can inhabit other bodies. That's, that's impulse, that's fire, that's passion. So they're closer to the impulsive side of that scale. Um, lots of lore came up on them. They can attract or push away the target. They can inhabit other bodies. There was a small man that they inhabited as well as the Hemsworths. <laughs> they use four leaf clovers um, to entrap one another, but more particularly, it seems like it goes from Adam to Lilith entrapping with four leaf clover clovers, which is why she is repelled by them. They do not summon or summon each other. They are not summoned by others. They were seen in ninth century Ireland, and before that, Ethiopia, rural ancient sites. And Lilith is fair, whatever that means, beautiful. When she um, targets someone to take over their body, giant eyeballs with hand protrusions come out of her face and melt the skin. She sometimes takes the form of a redheaded woman. And their current status is that they were well, Lilith was secured to a safe location where Adam could not find her. I um, will turn myself into the dorm penitentiary until further notice. This is 
profiler Milagros Kendall. Oh, first I have to thank the agents who helped with this case. I am overwhelmed with how badly I fucked this up. But Agent Pandar, Agent Arsenal Roy Touquet, Agent J Pistole, thank you very much for your tips on this case. And Agent DJ Phoenix won a special Monster Hearts 2 training period that we um, will send to them digitally. <sighs> this is Profiler Milagros Kendall, Agent 2543 signing off.